All right, I'm not gonna waste any more time, so let's get the cast out here. We have the amazing cast of Spaceballs, George Weiner, Michael Winslow, and Felix Silla. Make some noise. What's up, y'all? Awesome, very cool. Good morning. Radical, now it sounds good. So, um, as I was saying, the <laughs> How are we supposed to she follow didn't see, that? She didn't, notice. <laughs> she didn't even notice, that's the best. Oh my God, I can't believe I just saw that in real life. This is amazing. Um, so, well, <laughs> like I said, this film is just nonstop laughs. Who was the funniest on set when the camera stopped rolling? I am. Oh, bold claim. Because, because we, 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 kept, we kept challenging him. What are you, Colonel Sanders? Chicken? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> was that in the film? Yeah. You don't know your own films? No, it was not. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, not your, your turn. My turn? Yes, sir. I remember the funny guy was uh, Mel, Mel, Mr. Oh, Brooks. Guy, Mel yeah, Brooks. yeah. The <laughs> short. I made forgot the, he was there. Made the Schwartz be with me or with you, whatever, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. Oh. No, that's Wait a minute. That's a, that's a family show. I think we're going to cause trouble. You keep that microphone? Okay. Well, so, okay. let's wake up the room. <laughs> Everybody doing photos on the other side? What's up, y'all? Photo, y'all in booth number one and two? Be booth right one up. and two, what's up, y'all? <laughs> booth one. Take my picture. <laughs> booth number two, Charlie Sheen. <laughs> Tiger blood. <laughs> oh my God! Somebody, somebody cut the power to Carmen Electra. <laughs> Nobody paid the bill. Oh my God! <laughs> All right, I think we know who the funniest was on set now. <laughs> Me? No, I was not. Was Barf? No, Barf. John Candy. Oh, John Candy. Yeah, remember, the amazing John Candy. Remember the day, remember the day we were dra he was dragging a trunk yes. out in the middle of the desert in uh, Arizona? <laughs> yeah, it was one, it before we combed it, yes. Yeah, all of a sudden it stopped. We were filming, all of a sudden it stopped. He started screaming and said, God that damn, look what I'm doing on my birthday, dragging a freaking trunk in the middle of Juma, Arizona. You know, he stopped. And, and what's his name, Mr. Mel Blanks, well, Mel uh, Brooks says, What's going on with you? Yeah, it's my birthday. Look at what I'm doing on my freaking birthday. Dragging a trunk. And did you comb it? Did you find it? Yep, 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 yep. We combed it, but I had to use an Afro pick. <laughs> <laughs> you notice it was an Afro pick. <clears throat> okay, give him his mic. We were just we were just trying to figure this out. Oh, while he's doing that. <laughs> All right, so now we all have mics. That was an amazing musical interlude. Wonderful Make some noise for that, guys. Make oh. Oh. Now we all sit. And for those of you that stayed up late, too late at the at karaoke last night, and sang in the membrane, and sang in the brain. God, that is incredible. I don't even know how to follow that. Um, <laughs> just lead on, baby. Just lead on. So uh, you mentioned Mel Brooks. Obviously, he's yes, one of the great. Mel Brooks. It sounds like Bart, Rick and Morty now. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, one of the great comedy directors of our time. Um, what is his vibe like as a director? Does he get serious in between takes, or is he just all the time constant jokes? You take this one. Uh, oh, he can get serious. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> but he. It, it's, a, it's, it's all fun on the set. I mean, that Mel is the funniest man alive, and, and you enjoy every minute of working with him. Um, but he's making a movie, you know, so he's, he wants it to be right. And if, uh, 
got to be right. It's got to be right. Because somebody's yelling at him. Mel, you know, <laughs> it's not uncommon to do multiple. You all do always do multiple takes on a movie, but Mel, Mel would do multiple dozens of oh, takes oh, in a movie. Wow. Yes, uh, if you didn't get it right. So, so yeah. yeah, he was a stickler for that, but, yeah. but always great fun. Oh, wow. That's, that's amazing. Um, Remember the time when the, when, when the studio decided they wanted to initiate one of their young execs and they sent him down to the set to tell him that he was four pages behind? <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. They sent a young, a young you know, pimple face exec, a young uh, uh, MGM exec to tell Mel Brooks that he was four pages behind. Yeah. They did that as a, to, to like yeah. initiate the guy, I guess. That's in the, right. The group. Mel ate him for lunch. Yes. He ate him for lunch and he goes, what? He goes, Mr. 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 Brooks, the student wants me to let you know that you're four pages behind. What? I'm four pages behind? <laughs> Great. Give me the script. Bring it over here. <laughs> Where's your freaking four pages? Get off my set! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and the execs are going, ah! <laughs> <laughs> but guess what? We were on time. Wow. That's incredible. That really happened. Right? Yeah. No, that really happened. I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> it was great. We were going, oh my God, this poor kid. He's probably still going, oh my God, I remember the time that Mel Brooks, he, bit, he, he lipped my face off because I told him he was four pages behind. <laughs> that never happened again. <laughs> so. It didn't, did it? This seems like a natural question to ask, but was there much improv allowed on set? Or did no. You just, no. Nothing was improv. Nothing? Yeah, w things would change sometimes, okay. but you didn't change it on your own. Right. It wasn't improv that way. Oh. If Mel looked at a scene, and you know, we did that, the scene uh, where there was going to be, uh, the, they were going to redo her nose. Um, that scene had a whole different look to it for the first, all the first morning we shot. And Mel said, I don't like that anymore. We're going to do a completely different scene. So uh, there were changes made on the fly, oh, but yeah. they were made by Mel. Big time. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Because we were four pages behind. <laughs> <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Well, um, obviously, another kind of unforgettable part of the film is Rick Moranis and Dark Helmet. Was it difficult to do scenes with that mask on? And, like, was it hard to not crack up whenever he spoke in Dark Helmet voice? Yeah, Rick, Rick um, there was a lot of laughter on the set. The problem is that Rick would drop his helmet so Mel wouldn't see him laughing. And, I, and then he'd get me in trouble because I'm laughing and I'm seeing his knees shaking. But he, no, he, Rick, Rick was one of the great funny actors you'll ever work with. Uh, he was so creative on the set as well. Uh, and uh, just an absolute He was helping genius. him direct it, right? Because uh, yeah. Rick was trying to get his, his, his DGA certification at that time. That's right. So he was getting his DGA certification, so he, would, like, he was like, I guess, second or, or assistant director. So he, he was kind of like had, in, in name, so he was helping him because he wanted to get his DGA certification. So it really was like Scrooge and Helmet. Like, yeah. You can't go oh, over yeah, yeah. The helmet, you Big know? time, man. Number two. I mean, I'm, 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 believe me, I was supposed to be there for two days. I was there two and a half weeks. Yeah. <laughs> I was scheduled for two days' work, maybe. Four pages uh, behind, right? Yeah, right. Four yeah. pages behind. <laughs> so how does that work? At the end of two days, you're like ready to go home, and they're like, "By the way," or is it just like one more day? And I don't know. He, he just he just kept he hung, he hung on to us. He kept us around because he knew that something was going to come up where he needed us to walk around or walk through a scene. Because remember, you got to have continuity. Of course. Usually, there's a script supervisor that says, "Oh, don't forget, so and so has to walk through here," and because you're in the set, so yeah. we're all there, so we have to walk through. You know. Your, your, your background is just as important as the foreground. Uh, the extras are just as important because it's atmosphere. You want it to look like you're on the planet Earth, you've got to have people on the Earth. Oh, yeah. You know, so that was its integral part, man. Its fingers, it's a hand. It's a hand. Very true. Yeah. Um, so then what I wanted to ask about, ever since I was a little kid, I've been obsessed with Pizza the Hut. Do you guys know how the costume was done and uh, any memories of Dom DeLuise's involvement in the film? I don't remember, but I, knew he, I know he was delicious. <laughs> it sounded great. Dom was cool, man. And remember, pizza, if you don't come up with the money, pizza is going to go order out for you. <laughs> and remember, so in the end, he actually ate himself to death. That's right, yeah. Right. And I always, every time I saw that kid, I was like, I swear to God, they just smothered pizza all over this, whoever this guy is in there. I was like, and the guy sitting cool. next to him is eating him. <laughs> yeah, I know, you're delicious. <laughs> That's right. So I mean, good. I would love to make another Mel Brooks movie. Let's put that out there. Mel, yes. we, we need some work, yo. Yes. Where Mel, are you at, Mel? We know you're watching, We need some Mel. work, man. Just, just give us something to do, or 
I'll write it, and, and you can produce it. We don't care. We just want some more stuff to do. We want some more. We want another Mel Brooks movie of you know, some kind. Uh, of Return of Blazing Saddles. <laughs> I guess nowadays you could make that movie now. <laughs> well, speaking of the possibly working with Mel again, have any guys thought about a Spaceballs sequel or a Spaceballs prequel ever over the years? Uh, I get asked that about every third day. I'm sure these guys do. Are you going to do a sequel? Um, there was a time we were very close to a sequel uh, a few years back, uh, and things fell through. Um, it, it, uh, but it does come up. And Mel, Eve, recently, is less than a year ago, uh, thought we might still do it, but um, reality, I don't think it's going to happen at this point. Uh, you know, he's not a young man, and when Mel's on the set, Mel is producing, directing, starring in it, writing it. It's a lot of work, um, and I'm not sure he is ready for that right now, but uh, it's still always talked about. You know, is it possible? Is it possible? Uh, uh, hard, to, hard to imagine. Maybe we should do Spaceballs as a podcast. Oh man, that could be the huge. ball cast. <laughs> oh, that might balls. work. That might work. No, Michael, you know, I think uh, I heard they're going to make a sequel to it. It's called. He, he wants to know if Rick Moran comes out of retirement. Good. He wants to do a sequel called Spaceball Two. Look for more money. Yeah, the quest. Yeah, the the quest money. for more money. Yeah, yeah. search for more money. So, yeah. I might get a lunchbox I'm out of it. I'm waiting for it. I am too. Are you ready? We gotta find something. To, man, we gotta find something to do. We've got to find something to do. Yeah, waiting oh, for man, Mel to so do another one. We know if Keanu Reeves can put out cyber, if, if Keanu can put out cyberpunk, then we can put out ballpunk. Something. Space, oh we can do something. You do the Schwartz Awakens. Uh, oh, God. You know, the Phantom Schwartz. The, the Schwartz so goes many. to Denny's. Oh, my God, the Schwartz strikes back. <laughs> yeah. The Schwartz, the Schwartz makes cheeseburgers in and, out, in, and out, in and out of the Schwartz. Rise of the Lone Star. You know, there's so many options. <laughs> so many titles. You write it and I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, I'm not kidding. Because nowadays people self-produce their things. You know, people make stuff themselves now. I mean, they're making feature films on the iPhone and on, and on your Samsung and your and your Galaxy Notes. So, if they can make if they can make movies on your cell phone, then we should be able to do something together. Yeah. Something. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I just saw I just saw the dog in John Wick Three steal the movie. <laughs> the dog stole the home. I mean, Halle Berry's doggies were cool, but Keanu Reeves' a bulldog. I mean, that dog st stole every single scene he was in. So I'm gonna be a dog. <laughs> well, we had a half a dog, half a human, right? Barf. Exactly. He's Barf. a mog. That's right. That's yeah. right. He was a mog. Yeah. We know Chris Farley's brother could. Yeah. He's he's funny. Chris Chris's brother is really funny. Kevin Farley. Yeah. Oh yeah. Kevin's cool, man. That's awesome. That's cool. I've seen the, I've seen him in the documentaries and stuff like that. Really. So maybe we should break the rules in an organized manner and come up with something. That's a, that's a really solid idea. Shit, put that out there, seriously. All cast. It's in the it's in the internet lands now. Um, so another Wait. one. Oh. <laughs> I love it. So um, <laughs> wait a second. You don't have to go to the restroom, do you? Wait. I'm the bad guy. Cause I'm the bad guy. Thank you, Billy. Yes. What the hell is that song about, man? <laughs> even Chicha Chunk goes, hey man, I'm stoned, I don't even get it. <laughs> I don't know what it's about either, man. <laughs> That's you know it's funny you were in Far Out, man, with Chong. So did you do and that? And next you do movie, that, did you do that to him on the set? <laughs> yes. Yes, I love it. Um, and we made Cheech and Chong's next movie. You know, Cheech and Chong do not work with a script. They didn't work with a script. No, no, they improv the whole movie. Oh wow, I love Far Out, man, but that kind of explains. They improv it. That, it explains a lot, but. Chaplet, yep, that hasn't been done since Chaplet, where you just improv the whole movie. Whereas in Spaceballs, there was room for improv, but you know what? It was structured. He was quite serious. Remember the time that um, he and the he and the and the and the and the, and the was a, the DP were trying to figure out there was a shot missing. I told you it's supposed to be on this side with this camera, but I don't. Winslow, what did I say before? And I went. Ah, 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 
want to shut up. I'm not going to ask you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one thing that, uh, that I've been you know, saying for, about Spaceballs for a long time, unquestionably one of, if not the most quotable movie ever made, so, and I mean that, and you can walk into a room anywhere in this world and start a Spaceballs quote, and someone in that room can finish the quote. Um, I was curious what your favorite, you know, if you had a favorite line in the movie, and what fans most frequently quote back at you. Sir, <laughs> I've left the beeps, the sweeps, and the creeps, and everybody keeps asking me where they are. They're in the freezer. <laughs> Just so that you know. Hey, Mr. Winslow, what about the beeps? In the freezer. <laughs> With the dry ice pack, okay? <laughs> but that's the question I get asked all the time. Where are the bleeps? Wow, well, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, now we know. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it's always in the freezer section. <laughs> like you go to the supermarket, go to the freezer section. <laughs> you want shrimp? <laughs> I didn't know you were into text mix yo. <laughs> oh, man, incredible. Um, George Felix, guest favorite line movie? I have no favorite line. He's got all the lines right here. Oh, I know, yeah. right? Yeah, just sit next to him yeah. and you got a whole new bunch of favorite lines. Yeah, I really enjoy I'm the only person that can freak out with Robin Williams. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> how do you answer noises? <laughs> Thank God we have the same improv teacher. <laughs> That's amazing. Harvey Lembeck was great, man. Really? Same improv teacher? Wow. But I wasn't in the same class. Nobody wanted to be in Robin's class. Oh, my gosh. Brr, uh, Mr. Happy. Oh, wow. He didn't want to be in the same class as Robin because he took over. Oh, bad. I mean, the teacher would argue with him, and he'd, he'd switch languages. He'd, he would switch dialects. And oh, the guy my go, gosh. Oh, forget it, youngster. <laughs> Harvey Lembeck, he was Eric Von Zipper in all the Beach Blanket Bingo movies. That was the improv teacher. Oh, wow. A little lesson in Hollywood here, guys. Oh, yeah. I didn't know he was Eric. I didn't know he was Eric von Zipper. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a, a line that you hear most from from fans at, at signings and stuff like that, Felix? Or? Not, no, we no. had a lot of fun running up and down the sands yeah. in Arizona, in Yuma, Arizona, and they had a bunch of people waiting on the dune buggies. Yes. And they were waiting for us to get out of there. Because so, because they wanted they wanted yeah, to tear they up. Wanted, they wanted uh, the place so they go up and down, you know, the dunes. Hey, come on, so dudes, dudes, hurry up, get out of the yeah. way so we can, yeah. like, tear stuff yeah. up, dudes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they couldn't wait for us to get out of there, yeah. Because well, they, were, they were sitting there literally. Of course, lines, yeah, waiting, along, waiting, along yeah. The yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had a lot of fun working in that place. It was really fun work. With but it. I got to say, yeah. it was great. great I would not have met you, and I would not have, That's right. I wouldn't have met you, man, if it wasn't for, if, if it wasn't for Mel's. You know, yes. uh, for, for his generosity. Yeah. Aww. I mean, I got to meet. I got. I got. I got friends. Oh, I, got, I got friends that I love, man. I got, got people. Like, I haven't seen. I haven't seen them. In, I haven't seen you all in I'll years. You my wallet. I saw you going. What it's you okay. Taking? I'm not Penn and Teller. <laughs> <laughs> or Chris Angel Mind Freak. <laughs> <laughs> and George, you have a favorite line in the movie? Well, I think the, um, there's a couple that that I get um, uh, asked about or copied and uh, repeated to me. Um, uh, wh wh when is this happening? It's happening now, the now now scene. Of course. Um, which was a, a great favorite of Mel's, I have to say. Uh, which put a lot of pressure on it for Rick and I, you know, oh, yeah. when we did it. But we had great fun shooting that scene. Um, and so people like to run through that whole sequence. Um, and then people love to come up and ask me if I'm chicken, Colonel Sanders. Of course. Uh, and <laughs> I clear my throat and say, yeah, that's right. But, uh, um, you know, there were, there were a lot that maybe Schwartz be with you is nothing I ever said, but that's one of the favorite quotes, certainly, from the show. You know, Spaceballs has had an effect on modern society. And I know Star Wars has had an effect on, on, on modern culture, but Spaceballs had an effect on manufacturing and modern society. Remember Ludicrous Speed? Yeah, Ludicrous Speed. In a Tesla, you can actually order it in Ludicrous mode. I've heard of that. I've there is a setting for speed in a Tesla called Ludicrous mode. There is a real Ludicrous mode. Yeah. And they were going to, for the new ones, they were, they were going to do a plaid mode, but they took oh. it out. Well, it's true. And I, I, yeah. I will say, when we shot that scene, um, you know, Mel said, um, all right, I want you to face to look like you're in ludicrous speed. I said, we never, I don't know what the hell you're talking, I mean, <laughs> what do you mean, Mel? Just pull your face back, do it, you know. 
That's and I wasn't in ludicrous speed, but I was scared to death that Mel was going to eat me if I didn't do this. I said, Rick, are you ready? <laughs> so we, you know, I, I, I was doing this and, you know, rehearsing it in, in private and trying to get my mouth pulled back. It wasn't easy. It was, I mean, I, but Mel scared the hell out of us, so we did it right. Wow. It was fun, man. So basically, Spaceballs has had an effect on modern society. Oh, for sure. <laughs> It'd be, it'd be so funny if Spaceballs became like the next Jules Verne thing, that all that stuff comes true before Star Wars, right? Look what like, happened back like to the people, future. People go plaid and like there's like Schwartz rings and, you know, Mega Maid. It's early. Give it time. We start stealing air from other planets, you know. That could all come true. Don't laugh. That might actually happen. That's actually scary. Um, yes, Perrier. Remember the can of Perrier? Oh, the best. The way he hits the carry the perriers like with such enthusiasm. Well, I did that in Cheech and Chong's next movie with a Coca Cola can. <laughs> mm -hmm. You'll have to look at it on YouTube. It's called Cheech and Chong uh, uh, next movie Welfare Office. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Dana. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. It's oh, uh, well, killing me! It's Lord of the Rings. Uh, this way, you fools! Gandalf! My precious. <laughs> I love it. Space Gollum. <laughs> so, so I'll do one more before we turn it over to the audience. And um, um, so, you know, one thing I didn't appreciate that much about Spaceballs until I got older was how amazingly good the special effects were. Were you guys surprised when ILM did the effects? And um, We were honored. Oh, absolutely. Because I guess George saw it and he liked, he liked the whole premise. He said, you know what, I'll do all your stuff for you. Because he was just, he said, you know what, you actually went to the trouble to really, to really do it. Respect, even though it's funny, yeah. it's not mean. Right. It was just, so he said, you know what, why not? Yeah. Nowadays, I don't know if they could do that now because Disney owns Lucasfilm. I don't know. I, I, I would love to see it happen, but there have to be some licensing issues and some mm -hmm. things worked out. Would be yeah. nice. Well, touching on licensing issues, actually, real quick, um, I'm sure you guys are aware that there was the one caveat George had, I think, in agreeing to do Space Bulls, that no toys would be made. Right. Um, so if somehow that got lifted, what kind of Space Balls, like toys or merch or action figures, would you really want to see? Mine. Colonel Sanders action figure? Yeah. The hell with the rest of them. Just Colonel Sanders. Just Colonel Sanders. <laughs> did, did Rick Moranis have a Colonel Sanders doll that he played with? <laughs> I was his Colonel Sanders doll. <laughs> yes. Wow. That's a good question. Well, I remember how, uh, I remember how um, Apple Records licensed Apple the rights to use iTunes. And is it only on the condition you don't get into records? Oops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now Apple's bigger than Apple Records. I never thought that would happen. Oh, I know, right? How crazy is that? Wow. The, the, talk about, talk about a, a, a paradigm shift. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's really is a, it is a paradigm shift, isn't it? <laughs> if it was from Liverpool, I never would have thought it would be like that then. <laughs> what do you think, Paul? Yeah, I think the same thing then. <laughs> You've never been to Liverpool, have you? <laughs> oh, you know, I try to adjourn to another dimension. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> oh man. Uh, hey, are Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman still want to kill each other? Good. <laughs> they should do a black version. Dreadpool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dreadpool. <laughs> oh my God. That's out in the in the in the ether now. Uh, so. What happens if? Uh, if, if Pikachu shows up in, in, in the next Deadpool movie, is it going to be Pikapool or Dead Chew? <laughs> I'm going for Dead Chew. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I don't want to be too selfish with the questions here. I do want to give the audience a chance audience to questions. get in there. Guys, anyone uh, got any questions for this amazing cast here? You got one right up here? Just try and be, <laughs> try and be loud if you can. Keep it up. I'm going to do more hip-hop. <laughs> scariest law firm commercial you've ever seen the ones where they're dead serious about what they do <laughs> oh I know I know the ones that are serious about 
We will take care of you no matter what happens. You don't pay unless we win. Then we take it all. <laughs> Does anyone want to weigh in uh, on the scariest law firm commercials you ever seen? Oh, I think they're all terrifying. They're all pretty terrifying. Yeah, right? no, but he's right. The ones where they really are acting, those are the scariest. I think the more specific they are, the scarier they are to me. Like, have you or a loved one been hurt by a plane accident ca caused with uh, cancer surgery on the 11th of November on an international flight? Do you it's have like, a boil in your left knee because your butt was not capable of being of being a medic? <laughs> Yes, do you have a boil in your left knee because your butt was not aromatic? Call us now! <laughs> what? <laughs> she did. She memorized the whole thing. Our audience is telling us about stuff. What's your question? Let's get her a microphone. Yeah, it's there. Can we yeah, go ahead, get her a microphone, man. Go ahead. If you are a loved one has recently you will call now. When you learn a factor sold deadly asbestos products, it downs as a company's being wor putting workers at risk. Has made thirty billion dollars so set aside to pay asbestos victims. You may be entitled to financial compensation. We have a free legal consultation call one 8989 That's one 8989 Get this girl a check. Let me write it down. Hang on. I'm gonna write that down. The question hang on, let me let me write this out. The question she asked was <laughs> My pen's broken. Gotta get a Sharpie. What was your question? <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was, it was the scariest law firm commercials. Um, it was what the scariest law firm commercials were. And then she just did the, uh, the she recited the- So we have, we have, we have, we, everybody has their own local law firms. They have their own local commercials. I think they should have, they should have a smackdown. Where you have all the different all the different law firms bring their commercial people and have them do it in the ring, man. Like the legal rumble. Yeah, yeah legal rumble. Yes. The rum legal rumble in the jungle <laughs> with insurance. I love it. Um, so, do we have any other audience questions, guys? Bonus if they're about space balls, but they don't have to be. <laughs> That's all right. I have uh, I have plenty more. I could go I could go all day on these. Um, so one thing I've, uh, I've kind of noticed about Spaceball is that it seems to grow even more beloved over time. Yeah. Was there ever a point where you realized like 10 years, 15 years later, like, wow, this thing is maybe bigger now than when it came out? Uh, yeah, kind of like Charlie Sheen with the tiger blood. Winning! <laughs> I sh I, you know, I, I, just, I, I said hello to Charlie yesterday, but I should have grabbed a microphone and said, hey, Sheen! <laughs> Kitty's hungry. <laughs> Usually when I do that, all the cats in the neighborhood go <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, you do the MGM line, perfect. I actually did that for a college professor. She asked me to, uh, to, to do that. She, there, was a, there was a doctor, uh, she, she, she was a speech therapist, and she wanted to know how close the human voice could come to uh, uh, the primitive voices of animals. So she had me sit there and make the noises of a tiger, an alligator, and a couple other things to see how close. I got like 92. I tested it. I was in Italy uh, staying at some friends of mine's house and they had a rabbit upstairs and they had cats as well. So they always had to keep them separate. So every day, it was a protected cage. Every day that cat would go up the stairs to try to get to that rabbit. Well, not that week <laughs> because I would do that tiger noise and it would drove that cat crazy because the primitive instincts came out on the cat. Yeah. And because uh, it was it was an old you know it Italian villa in the southeast. There was lots of marble and stone, so that sound bounced off the walls, kind of like here. So it's and the cat's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so it works. Well, you know, I gotta I gotta practice that. Please do. I have to work on it. I have to get a Behringer at the house. And, and you can also do wet feet. The web feed gets me every time. Um, guys, do you have any, any recollection of, of realizing later on that Spaceballs was a classic? 
We're still scratching our heads about that one. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I say that, ask the question again, I'm sorry. Um, did you have any recollection of maybe sometime years later when you started to realize that Spaceballs was really a classic and it had legs? I, I, I don't think any of us, you, you don't when you make a film, expected this kind of longevity to go on and on and on with your film. Um, I realized that when fathers would bring their children up and, and the children had seen the movie and the fathers, and now it's grandfathers, it seems like. Um, so it does have a line, and Mel said that too. He, he'd never had a movie that had the, this kind of life expectancy. You know, movies, everyone holds on to their movies, but this one just never goes away. Yeah. And um, that was a surprise, I think, for all of us, and a wonderful surprise. Oh, definitely, definitely. You like Young Frankenstein was one thing, but this is something else. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, Spaceballs is on, a, on an incredibly different level. Um, I actually had a curious one for, for Felix, actually. Since you had worked on Star Wars films and Spaceballs, do you ever you know, see George at like a Star Wars event or anything like that and, and start chatting up about Spaceballs? Uh, I, I, I got to see George uh, Lucas, Mr. Lucas. Mm -hmm. I did a movie called uh, Indiana Jones, The Temple of Dooms. Right. I was doubling a little time, short run. I was on the film for about six months. And George was kind of a shy person. Yep. Uh, you know, he's always in the back, unless you talk about money, right? And then it, yeah. George, George is a lot different than uh, Steven Spielberg. Spielberg is like, you know, uh, he could talk to you, more have a conversation. More extra, more yes. Uh, Spielberg, one day we went to set early in the morning, and he looked at me and said, Felix, if you were this much shorter, I will use you on a second ET, in which I'm still waiting. Mm -hmm. You know, in a cave, Why right? Not? But like, like I said, George, I mean, he's, you know, way uh, in the background. And uh, uh, but I, I mean, 40 years ago, we had Buck Rogers. Who, who, who 40 years later, who's going to talk about it soon? I never dreamed about you get to talk about, you know, Buck Rogers or oh, Spaceball 40 years later, well, you know? So I never thought of it. I remember, I remember all that, man. Right, right. What a body. When he goes, the first time Twiggy saw uh, Colonel Deering, he goes, what a body. Yeah. Wow. And, and the then, audience in the, in the theater went, whoa. And you know who was that? Huh? Mel, 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 uh, Mel Blank. Mel Blank, yeah. Mel Blank did the voice. Yeah. Of Twiggy. Of Twiggy, yeah. Beedy, 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 beedy. Hey, Buck. Yeah. That was Mel Blanc, man. Mel Blanc, yes. That. He didn't know that was. He didn't Whoa. know it was Mel. I, you know, not too many people know it. Yeah. Second year they changed. I knew it. the voice. So. I knew that voice. I said, "Oh my God." That's oh yeah, the best. <laughs> you can't find it better than Mel. See, it's a, it's amazing how uh, how it's 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 almost like family. It's like cousins. We all know each other. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Especially totally. when it comes to production, you'd be surprised how how many folks know each other through other things. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah, small industry. Yes. Um, that, well, Adam's family, to me, it was like a family. Yep. I mean, everybody along with each other. There's a lot of professionalism in there. Lot, you know, the Carolyn Jones and uh, John Aston. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what's his name? The grandpa. The, uh, uh, Mel, uh, what's his name? Uh, the old guy. The, uh, Jackie Coogan. Jackie Coogan. We're, like, we're all like a family. Everybody got along with each other. That's awesome. No, uh, Nothing went on like a scream at each other. You know, Everybody they we, knew they were they knew the, what they were gonna do for that day. It was because they were family, man. Yeah. We knew yes, they like knew what a, we were doing. You enjoy to go to work yeah. so, because right. you get together just as a family. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. But well, I found now it's a different. Like the director, they don't know what they want to do. And they well, scream at no, some. That's right. There's no yeah. good writers. It's, it's, no it's good hard. Ideas. You don't agree. Yeah. Uh, nobody writes old school style no more. Yeah. There's no comedy. There's, there's, there's amazing directors and actors out there and stuff, yeah. but I agree that the, the Today's writing movies, is not what it used to be. If it doesn't fart, explode, catch on fire, fly through the air, or morph into a creature, it isn't written. Yeah. Yeah, that's very yeah. true. And this is the women's films. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So um, we are almost out of time, but I do want to ask one more um, before yes. we uh, get a chance. You know, you mentioned family and stuff like that, and obviously there's a, quite an extended family of Spaceballs fans around the world, and you've gotten to spend some time with some of them this weekend. Um, I was curious, either here or in general at other conventions, what is the best Spaceballs cosplay you've seen? Fans coming up in Spaceballs costumes. What are some of the most impressive ones you guys have seen? Well, DragonCon was out there. Yeah. 
the year that I went Dragon Con, uh, there was it, that's insane because oh, yeah. the, the the Dragon Con stuff was nuts because everybody was dressing up as Johnny Depp, mm -hmm. oh, okay. as, as 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 Jack Sparrow. So there were contingents of like 150 pirates. Oh, my then God. there were like the the Stormtrooper chapter for Atlanta. They were there, so there's a hundred of them. Oh wow! So we had a we had a parade at nine in the morning, and all the pirates are stumbling around because they're really drunk for real. They really were drunk, and they were stumbling around. And then you had the stormtrooper come in. They want the pirates wanted to fight the stormtroopers, yeah. and the stormtroopers wanted to fight the Klingons, <laughs> and the Klingons wanted to fight the pirates. So we kept going. We know we better start the parade early. Just get them marching so they won't fight each other. And of course, Eric Estrada was the uh, grand marshal of that parade. What? So what he would do is he would get on his motorcycle. And he would ride around the pirates and get them really angry. And then you go around the storm and get them really angry. And then you go around the front, let's march! <laughs> <laughs> oh my you know, Michael, the first the uh, Dragon Con that I did in Atlanta, mm -hmm. I saw a guy walking towards me dressed like uh, Barf, mm -hmm. John Candy. Yeah. I, I swear, I thought it was him. Oh. I thought it was real. I mean, the costume was terrific. They'll spend thousands of Beautiful dollars on these costumes. costumes. And, and you know what? Props to all of you. Hey, yeah. the best yeah. kind of costumes oh my God. are right Maybe there that any of us have ever seen. They're right over there. Yeah, okay. They're remarkable. Oh my God. Okay, we get all that dark helmet ask a question here. Yes, we still nice. fear the ring. Do you still fear the ring? <laughs> oh, of course. But luckily, I've got, I've got a deflector ring. dish right here. <laughs> I've got a deflector dish. That costume is amazing. Incredible. Well done, because there's thousands of dollars on these costumes folks will spend. Oh. I mean, the Wonder Woman stuff and the Batman stuff. I saw a guy who was 400 pounds, had a custom Batman tailored suit, and he was 400 pounds, and he looked good. Wow, good <laughs> for him. So, so you know, hey. Some of the costumes look, they look better than the one made in the, the movies. Studio. Some of the costumes people, people make are better than the ones in the features. All the way oh, out yeah, to spend a lot of money to make Exactly. The yeah. they, they did that when that one X-Men movie was coming out. I can't remember which one it was, but I think it was Apocalypse or something like that. And they showed people at conventions. They're like, this looks better than the movie version they just showed. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Uh, so, George, any, any favorite uh, Spaceballs costume you've seen by fans? Uh, you know, actually, I, I can't remember more than just uh, people coming up with a hat on or something, you know, that, like that. I mean, I, honestly, I know we just uh, referenced it, but these costumes are just remarkable. Amazing. Right? Um, and we yeah. did a, yesterday we had pictures with them, and they have my, my entire uh, uniform as well. And uh, I hadn't been in one in all these years, so wow. it was... It was fun to get back into it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and you look good, too, man. Hell yeah. Hell it yeah. took years of work to, to get <laughs> to me looking that way. To squeeze it back into that? Training, like Rocky <laughs> yeah. style. I can still barely fit in my police academy uniform. I can still fit in there. Oh, wow. Nice. Of course, I had to move the buttons around, but we're, we're, we're good. <laughs> we're, we're okay. Oh, Time man. flies when you're having none. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we are unfortunately just about out of time, so be sure to stop by their table, come get some autographs, get some pictures. I know they have many, many, many more amazing stories to tell you, and give these guys an amazing round of applause. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. This is John Glover, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Lionel Luther recommends it. Ah, have some fun. Follow your fandom.